Integration by Substitution Integration by substitution can be thought of as the reverse of the chain rule for derivatives. We change an integral of the form f evaluated at g of x times g prime into one of the form f evaluated at u, for which we have integral formulas. Generally, when our integrand is given to be a composite function, that is, one function inside of another, we get started by choosing u to be the innermost or inside function. Example 1, I'm asked to evaluate the integral of cosine evaluated at 5x plus 1 with respect to x. Well, we'll integrate using substitution. Notice that my integrand is composite, the outside function is the cosine function, and the inside function is 5x plus 1, so I'll let u be my inside function, 5x plus 1. Then I find the derivative of u. If u is 5x plus 1, then du is equal to 5 times dx. Then I'll isolate dx, solve that equation for dx, I get that dx is equal to du divided by 5, or 1 -fifth times du. Now I'll substitute u for 5x and 1 -fifth du for dx in the original integral. So my integral changes from the cosine evaluated at 5x plus 1 with respect to x to the integral of the cosine of u times 1 -fifth du, or 1 -fifth times the integral cosine of u now with respect to u. Because 1 -fifth times the integral of the cosine of u fits one of our basic integral formulas, I can now evaluate the integral by simply finding the antiderivative of the cosine function. I know that the antiderivative of cosine of u is sine of u, then I multiply by 1 -fifth and add my arbitrary constant c. Because my original integrand was a function of x, I'll now go back and replace u with 5x plus 1 in my final answer. So now instead of 1 -fifth sine of u, I'll have 1 -fifth sine of 5x plus 1 plus my arbitrary constant c. Thus, the integral of the cosine of 5x plus 1 with respect to x is evaluated as 1 -fifth times the sine of 5x plus 1 plus c. And remember that I can always check my answer by taking the derivative of 1 -fifth sine of 5x plus 1 and seeing that that gives me cosine of 5x plus 1. Example 2. I'm asked to evaluate the integral of the quantity 1 minus 2x to the third power with respect to x. I'll again notice that my integrand is composite. The outside function is the cubing function, and the inside function is 1 minus 2x. So I'll let u be equal to the inside function 1 minus 2x. I'll find the derivative of u. The derivative of 1 minus 2x is negative 2 dx. Then I'll isolate dx and get that dx is equal to du divided by negative 2 or negative one-half times du. And now I'll go into my original integrand and substitute u for 1 minus 2x and negative one-half du for dx. Doing so, my integral changes from the quantity 1 minus 2x to the third power with respect to x to u to the third power times negative one-half du, or that's the same as negative one-half times the integral of u to the third power with respect to u. Negative one half times the integral of u to the third power fits one of our basic integral formulas, so now I can evaluate it by simply finding the antiderivative of u to the third power. The antiderivative of u to the third power is one four times u to the fourth power, and I'll remember to multiply that by the negative one half that's out front. I'll end up with negative one eighth u to the fourth plus my arbitrary constant c. Now I'll go back and replace u with one minus two x, so I end up with negative one eighth times the quantity 1 minus 2x to the fourth power plus c. Therefore, my original integral was evaluated as negative 1a times the quantity 1 minus 2x raised to the fourth power plus my arbitrary constant c. Example 3, I'm asked to evaluate the integral of 4x divided by the square root of 2x squared plus 7 with respect to x. I'll again integrate using substitution. Notice that the denominator of the integrand is composite. The outside function is the square root function, and the inside function is 2x squared plus 7. So I'll let u be the inside function 2x squared plus 7. I'll find the derivative of u. The derivative of u is 4x dx. And notice that du this time is the same as the numerator. So in this particular example, there's no need for me to isolate dx. I can substitute du directly. So I'll substitute u for 2x squared plus 7 and du for 4x in the original integral. And my integral will change from the integral of 4x divided by 
the square root of 2x squared plus 7 dx into the integral of 1 over the square root of u du, which is the same as u to the negative 1 half power with respect to u. Because the integral of u to the negative 1 half fits one of our basic integral formulas, I can evaluate by simply finding the antiderivative of u to the negative 1 half. The antiderivative of u to the negative 1 half is u to the positive 1 half divided by 1 half plus my arbitrary constant c. Well, that's the same as 2u to the 1 half. And remember, 1 half power is the same as the square root. So I end up with 2 times the square root of u plus c. I'll go back and replace u with 2x squared plus 7. And so then I'll have 2 times the square root of 2x squared plus 7 plus c. Therefore, my integral of 4x divided by the square root of 2x squared plus 7 evaluates as 2 times the square root of 2x squared plus 7 plus my arbitrary constant c.